Hi there, my name is Nikki. I'm with Strega Flora, and I am here to teach you how to make a wreath. Um, for those of you who ordered my wreath kits, I hear there's been a little bit of a delay, so hopefully you'll be receiving them any day. And this video is going to live live on the Field and Supply Live website, so you can refer to it if you want anytime, or if you haven't gotten your kit, you can take this class when you receive it, which I hope, hope is so soon. It feels like kind of the, the theme of 2020 thus far, um, patience. It's the last one of the year. Um, okay, I'm going to hop right into it since we have 30 minutes, and this will pretty much fill up the entire 30 minutes. So hopefully you have that much time. And hopefully you have a little bit of space that can get dirty. It gets not dirty, but like a little messy. So you have to embrace, embrace that about the class. So you're going to want to start with a wreath base. I prefer a grapevine wreath base because it's got like a little bit of fun movement to it. Um, if you get a pre-made pre wreath base, I suggest kind of altering it a little bit. What I like to do is usually there's one uh, vine that is wrapped around the whole thing, kind of keeping it really tight. And I, I find that that's a little limiting and ends up with a wreath that's a little too structured. So what I like to do is remove that wrap and kind of break it up a little bit. So that's what I did. And I kind of have like this loose shape, not too loose. I want to keep the structure so I mean it's up to you how loose you'd like to go with it but I'm starting here and you also want to make sure you have greens and I've got a mix of what do I have here I have cedar which smells so good and then I've got pine here as well some that I sent for my Christmas tree which embarrassingly has yet to be decorated but soon um, and then I also have some cypress here too which smells really nice and is kind of a Interesting texture to work with. I'm, I'm excited to kind of walk you through how you would go about using something like this. And then you also want to have some grasses on hand. Grasses, texture, anything works. Um, I love this foxtail. I think it's really fun, but you can use anything that's like growing around you. Just snip, snip, just give it a little snip. Um, we also need shears. Or if you don't have shears, flora shears, um, you can use any heavy duty scissors that you have. We will be cutting wire, which is next on the list of uh, supplies that you need. If you don't want to cut your wire with scissors, cut them with uh, wire cutters, which I am notoriously bad at doing and I've destroyed many a pair of scissors. Um, you also want to make sure you have a pair of scissors that are really sharp and can cut ribbon. Without, you know leaving a jagged edge. We're also going to need two kinds of wire. Um, this will come in your kit if you ordered the kit. If you don't have these wires, that's totally fine. They're pretty available at any floral supply store, but also like Michael's, Joann's, um, places like that. So we're going to use a uh, uh, this is called bind wire. It's a thin gauge bind wire. And this is what we're going to use to attach all the bundles of greenery to your wreath base. And then I also like to keep um, this wire on hand. Oh, this is bind wire. This is paddle wire. Did I say bind wire? Anyway, um, this is bind wire. This is really good for attaching things like pine cones. It's a little more easy to conceal easier to work with, softer. So you can also just get this wire and call it a day and use this to, to make your whole wreath. Some people do it that way too, or vice versa if you prefer um, the paddle wire to the bind wire. Um, we also have ribbon, so make sure you've got some of that on hand. Um, I prefer anything over an inch. I think this guy is like an inch, I think this is like an inch and a quarter, and this is an inch and a half. Um, just because it's a little bit more dramatic of a bow situation. You don't want a skimpy bow. Um, we also have pine cones that I just gathered from my yard. I have a ton of pine cones. I also have some uh, dried oranges that I dried in my oven. It takes a very long time. Ask me any questions. I'm happy to walk you through how to dry these in your oven. It takes a lot of patience, but it's worth it. It smells amazing. Um, lastly, I wanted to say that I am... Active. I'm going to hopefully be actively checking these, uh, this, 
question box. So feel free to ask any questions along the way. Hopefully I'll get to them in a timely manner. Um, okay, so let's get going. So first step, you wanna have all your greens in one place and then just get to, get to cutting. I like to cut a piece that is like this long. I would say what, six inches, give or take. So you can do it one of two ways. You can either cover your whole wreath in one green and then layer it with another green, but I find it's a little bit more dynamic to mix the greens as you go. It's also more fun. You can also, if you're a planner, you can pre-cut these pieces and create little bundles, and that way you just have a bunch of little bundles to then affix. I like to kind of do it as I go, so that's, that's how I'm gonna go about it. So you just make these little cute bundles. I like to layer the short pieces and the more um, dense pieces in the front and then the more just gestural pieces in the back. Um, so I generally do like anywhere from two to three pieces per bundle. And then you just take about, I'd say that's probably like six inches of wire, just to be safe. It's easier to um, have too much than too little. And I just create like a nice little tight bundle with my greens. And you can start anywhere on your wreath. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a kind of asymmetrical situation. I'm not gonna completely enclose the wreath. I think as of now, if it turns out that it, that's not really what the wreath wants to be doing, then I'll just fill it in. But I like to start generally where there's um, a, a closure on your wreath. So something that you wanna cover. So I'm gonna start here on the side where I've got this kind of wired off. And you just wanna kind of Go around a few times, make sure it's on there securely. Don't worry if it feels a little loose, you're gonna go back through and make sure everything is secure at the end. So you can really use any greens for this, um, anything that's in the coniferous, coniferous, is that how you say it? Coniferous family. Um, something that's gonna last a lot, a long time out of water is the goal, because you want this to be able to kind of stay up for a while. And you'll find that if you if you want it to stay like fresh and fragrant, it's a good idea to have a spray bottle of water on hand, something that sprays a pretty fine mist, because depending on where you put your wreath, if it's indoors, you don't want to spray like you know, something that's around it that could, you know, be damaged if you've got water on it. Um, so, yeah, just make sure you have, like, a fine mist sprayer, and you can spray it and hydrate it throughout the, you know, throughout the season. But it's also nice. It dries so beautifully. So you almost wouldn't know that it was dried until you go and touch it or try to move it, and then you'll see that the all the needles will start to fall off. But um, they last a really long time, which is great. It smells so nice. So when I'm adding a sec my second bundle, I kind of add each bundle about an inch down. And you'll see it feels very intuitive where you should where you should fix your bundles, but you want to make sure you're covering that wire and you're just laying and laying and laying and laying around the around the reef. So some of you um, might not have all these supplies on hand, and I was kind of racking my brain thinking about what you could be MacGyvering your wreaths out of if you don't have wire of any kind. Um, zip ties are fine-ish. Um, if you have like twist ties from a loaf of bread, that could work, a little small, but I think you could make that work. You could also use um, string, twine, Something, something that's sturdy and pretty easy to work with um, could also work. You will have to work a little harder trying to cover cover the string as you go, but it should it should do the trick. 
Um, yeah. Low maintenance. You want this to be as easy as possible. You can also, while you're working around the reef, you can see um, you have some opportunities to tuck the ends of your little bundles into the reef. So definitely use that, and you're going to be using that too when you start to add little gestural sprigs and kind of tie the whole thing together. But you can go ahead and do that too while you're working on it. Just use, use the reef as it presents itself to you. I wish I could see everybody's wreath that they're making. you get a branch that feels like it's got way too many limbs don't feel bad about snipping a few of the limbs off even if you like get it on there and then you pick it up and you realize that it's a little too crazy you can always scale scale it back because you can reuse the tips and I feel a little I feel like at this point I'm just going for the all-star branches you can go back through and reuse. You don't have to just use the tips. You can can definitely reuse the um, other pieces like further down the stem. And I'll show you how to do that too. So say for example, if I've got what is like a kind of ugly piece. Well, this one we've still got something to work with, but if I just had this, what I would do is you want to cut as far down on the stem as possible and just get a very close cut because you don't want to see any of this cut part sticking out for your wreath. I mean, you can generally hide it if you, if you see little pieces like that, but it just gives you a little bit more material to work with so you're not kind of tossing these pieces that have potential that are a little not as showy as, as the other pieces. And this is kind of a fun piece to hold on to too because this has a really nice shape that will give it a little bit more movement when you get your wreath like in a place to add, add movement. Thanks, Chad. Got Ella wishes you a swinging Christmas on in the background. Classic. I could listen to Christmas music all year. I kind of it's, it's I, I mean I started it definitely early. I think everybody started their holiday 
<laughs> try to get in the holiday spirit a little earlier than than normal this year, but I was definitely like blasting Mariah Carey and before Thanksgiving. I'm not ashamed to admit it. So you just want to keep, you know, you want to make sure you're filling in the gaps here. Make sure you have um, a nice shape going. I'm going to hold mine up in a second and see where we're at. It's always kind of the moment of truth. You're like, is this good? Is this cute? <laughs> but there's always an opportunity to go back through and, and edit. So you, you'll see it's a little dense right here, so I'm going to probably go through and thin that out um, a little bit, but getting there. Because I'm working on a smaller wreath base, um, you generally, I mean, it's all about scale, so you don't need to go too crazy um, on a small wreath base. You want to keep it a little, a little, um, a little less dense. You can still, you know, play with movement and shape, but I think I'm making mine a little too dense for the size, so that. I'm going to have to go back through and, and thin it out a little bit just because you're going to be like, what is that? <laughs> What's that shape? And you kind of go along. It's fun to give it a little, you know, tousle. It gives it a little bit more movement. You can kind of clear out the center here so it, it does actually resemble a circle, which is key. So as I'm kind of nearing the end of my little half circle, half moon, I'm going to start thinning out the, the little bundles. I'm going to make them a little smaller. I'm going to make them a little less dense. So that kind of creates a nice um, trailing off uh, shape instead of it just abruptly ending. That's kind of the fun part of making these um, you know, a little, the, the style that's a little bit more um, organic and minimalist is, it looks so natural and easy, but it actually takes some finagling to get it to look, you know, organic in that way. Thank you. 
and I've been going around, I don't know if you've noticed, but I kind of cut off the tail ends. I find that it's easier to hide. Um, and since I am working on a smaller reef base, I want to make sure that it isn't too dense. So that helps kind of streamline it a little bit. So I just cut off I leave like a little bit, like maybe an inch and a half, two inches left of stem. You can do it that way or you could keep it on um, whatever you find works better for you. Okay, I'm getting to a good point, I think. I think this is a kind of cool shape. I love what this is doing. Highly encourage movement like this. It's really fun. So you'll see here, like I was telling you, we want to slowly fade out here. And there are a few ways to do this. So usually what I'll do is I'll taper it like I was saying, and then you find kind of that last stem that will finish your wreath, um, but also you want to make sure that you pick a piece. I'm, I'm going to, we'll see, we'll see how this goes. Um, I'm going with this one because it's got a really slender stem and I think that will kind of blend really nicely and organically into the wreath base. So we'll, we'll try it out. I think I need one more piece probably to see. You can also, if you're finding that it, whatever you do isn't really hiding the fact that you've stopped your wreath, you can always choose that to be a place that you place pine cones or oranges or ribbon or any other kind of accessory that you want. So there's a way to disguise it that way as well. And you can also, Sometimes what I like to do is even just take like a small little piece that's um, not too dense. You can kind of tuck it in where you put that last piece to add another little element of coverage. Because I noticed that the last bundle that I put, you could see kind of the bottoms of the leaves scrunched and tied up with the, with the wire. So that one last piece covered that, I don't know if you can see, kind of covered that little scrunched area. So now what I'm gonna to wanna to do, I mean, you, you want it to retain its movement, but you also wanna make sure that you're not gonna put your wreath up and it's all gonna kind of disassemble itself, which, you know, if you're gonna put it outside is definitely a concern. So I, what I like to do is just kind of go through with some wire. And what I do is I lift up, so you obviously wouldn't want to um, pin down the pieces that you just put down. So I kind of like feel my way through and hide and choose a section to start wrapping and I'll hide the wire behind the pieces that are in front of it. So I'll just secure the wire. And then I'll just go through and kind of wrap it, pulling up the pieces that really should be showing along the way. And don't feel afraid to turn your wreath over too if you need to. It's, it's more sturdy than you think. That's feeling good. Yeah, I think that's gotten to a really nice place. Feels composed, but still has some texture and airiness to it, which is nice. And you still have some of that pretty grapevine showing. 
Um, what I think I'm going to do is normally I like to put the accessories kind of in one zone, like they all were gathered and clustered in that one area. But I'm feeling like this area is actually calling for something, and then this is calling for something. So I'm gonna I'm gonna get a little crazy, and see what I can come up with. Okay, so if you have pine cones, what you want to do is take your pine cone and take your bind wire and cut a length, probably the same length that you've been using for your wreath, your entire wreath. And what I do is I just go like a couple notches down. And I just wind the wire around the top pretty tightly, making sure you don't break it. So you have a little, you have a little tail here, two little tails. And that way you can wire it directly to the wreath. So I think what I'm gonna do. I like to really nestle them in there. And when you get a few going, they start to kind of layer on top of each other, and that creates a really nice look. So once you wire your pine cones, you get those going on there. I always like to place my pine cones facing the same direction as your wreath is going. So if all the leaves, all the, um, yeah, all the greens are going to the right, I would have your pine cone going to the right as well. It's kind of weird if you have it going to the left and your, um, everything else is going in a different direction. So I kind of take that into account when I'm placing them as well. <clears throat> and that's something to consider too when you're wiring your pine cone too because if you end up with the back in the front, it's going the wrong way. You have to rewire it, which is kind of what I just did, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna fake it. And pine cones are so fun to work with and they smell amazing, but this is what's gonna get your hands really sappy, especially if you've sourced them from the yard or, you know, somewhere they were, locally kind of occurring and not cleaned. So I'm gonna be pretty, pretty sappy by the end of this. Okay, so you'll see I've got my pine cones going there. I might nestle a few more in there, kind of scattered around. Um, but I'm gonna show you for time, because I think we're over oh, close. Um, I wanna show you how to get your ribbon on there. So. So I like to, um, instead of uh, ribboning on the wreath, I like to create a bow off of the wreath. See something like this. And then what I do is I just snip off a length of fine wire feed it through, you establish what's the front and what's the back of your bow. I'm just gonna feed it through the back here. And then you just, you just secure it directly onto the wreath. I just find that it makes a much nicer bow and you can also take it off, move it around. You're not disturbing the greens too much in the wreath itself by putting it directly on there, especially if you have like a big lush wreath and you go and put the ribbon in and then you have to move it. It's kind of gets a little, little hairy. Cool. 
So, there you have it almost. I think I'm probably gonna add a few more pine cones in there. Maybe um, some oranges. Let me show you how to do the oranges. I like to use the, the, the paddle wire for this because it has a sharper point and you can puncture the, the orange a little easier. So I just kind of go on either side of the, um, what do you call that? The segment, pit, segment pit. Uh, I like to go on either side just to ensure that it's gonna have some kind of stability and not um, tear directly through that, through the um, orange. So I just wire it, and you can see the wire, but it's not gonna be so noticeable. So I'm gonna tuck the orange right in there with the pine cones. And you can wrap it all the way around the wreath, or you can wrap it around a few, a few um, stems here, whatever feels right to you. just like that. And these are also really fun to make garlands with. You can make ornaments out of them. They're such a fun activity to do if you have a little patience. Um, but they make a really nice natural holiday decor element. So there you have it. Something like that. You can kind of wiggle your bow around. If you want to get a little wild with your ribbon, there are ways you can do that. So I like to do a dovetail cut. And what you do is you um, fold the ribbon in half like this, and then you cut at an angle, at a pretty sharp angle, from the inside of the folded part to the outside corner. So it makes something like that. So we'll do the other side too. And then what you'll want to do to finish up your wreath, you'll want to go back, you'll want to take a look at the back where you've twisted all the wire and just make sure you give them a cut so there's not anything sticking out that might be sharp, might hurt your wall, might hurt yourself. Um, yeah, but that's it. Something like that. And you could do more pine cones throughout. You could do like little ornaments throughout with the same technique. Um, and again, if you want to keep this, you know, feeling fresh, looking fresh, just give it a spritz of water every, let's say every couple days or so when you remember, um, and that will keep it looking fresh and smell, smell great. Oh, so you're starting from greenery. It would dry well if you wanted to make a wreath that you could use year after year. Um, well, that. I forgot to talk about adding dried ingredients. Um, you can make a wreath completely out of dried ingredients. There isn't a green really, I mean, you're gonna encounter some, some needles falling off for sure. I mean, you could, you could uh, wrap it up and pack it up, and make sure it's like very well padded, but you're still gonna encounter a little bit of shedding. Um, so I would say, maybe try to go with something that is dried. So um, you could make a whole wreath using this technique. Um, you can use like dried grasses, dried ferns are really pretty. Ferns dry well. You could even do like um, 
You could do a moss covered wreath. So you would just take moss and you would layer the moss on the wreath base and then wire it to the wreath base. And then from there you can add ferns and things like that and those dry really well. So that that's an option. But usually with evergreens, I mean, they can they can hang in there, but they're still gonna, you're gonna see some shedding. So they're not gonna look the same and they're not gonna be as fragrant as they would otherwise. But if you wanted to add a little um, dried accent to this wreath, you should, why not? So you're just gonna do the same thing, create a little bundle. Just tie it up. And then I like to cut it down a little bit. So I, I actually like to cut it down quite a lot so you don't see the stems. So I'm gonna, where does this wanna go? I'm gonna have it, what do you think? Maybe something here, kind of tucked in. Like that, like that. You could go through and do a few different dried little accents if you'd like. Um, I'm gonna, I think what I'm gonna do, it feels like it kind of wants to live behind the oranges, so we're gonna give that a go. And again, you wanna keep the shape of the wreath in mind when you choose a place to put something like this, um, because obviously you want it to kind of follow the line that you're already working with. Chad wants to know how you dry the oranges. Chad, it was such a, <laughs> a labor of love. You kind of have to, I mean, it, it really depends on your oven and your day. You really want to make sure that you're around because um, I found that I needed to take them out and flip them over a few times. But usually I just put my oven on 275, 250, depending on how thick the orange slices are and how big they are. You want to try to get them as thin as possible um, because that, you know, kind of lowers your, your cook time. And also if you don't cook them all the way through and you pull them out of the oven, they, they could get moldy. Even though they look dry, they're, they're still moisture inside. So you want them to be as thin as you possibly can get them um, without getting so thin that it's uneven because um, that is a recipe for, for burning your oranges for sure. So usually what I'll do is I'll put them on a, a parchment. I'll put them on a baking sheet on parchment and put them in the oven for like an hour, an hour and a half on one side and then an hour on the other side. But I generally will peek back in and, and see how they're doing like 45 minutes in to that side. And then you want to pull them out and then I just let them sit on a, a cooling rack for few hours overnight if you can that kind of makes them a little more make sure that they're dry it kind of gives them a little extra time to dry without being in heat um, and that works well or if you have a dehydrator even better that's pretty pretty easy I've heard that it takes like 24 hours to to dry them in the dehydrator um, but it's pretty easy it's just if you know you need patience and if you want multiples of them you want to make sure that you have multiple cookie sheets or um, a large baking sheet um, yeah that, that's pretty much it uh, yeah, but they're great and they last forever so you can reuse them and reuse them and reuse them and that that's a, a fun little little 
decoration that you can have in your house. So I think I would probably go back around. This is looking a little lonely with its um, one little tuft. I might add a few more in here. Um, and then I, would, I might add a few more pine cones too and oranges, why not? Go crazy. Or you could really pare it down and you could do, you know, just all greens, no dried elements as well, which would look like kind of calling for no dry but what's cool is that you can always if you have you're like oh I cut all these greens I have so much left over what should I do with them you could always make a little um, hanging cluster for your for your door so you just take a little few snips of things you want to make sure you have layers And I like to, yeah, get your longer piece in the back and then just keep layering it like this. And then you tie everything up with, uh, with the wire and then you finish it off with the ribbon and it just hangs and you can create a loop to hang around your door. You can hang it on a wall. You can insert pine cones kind of like up here. You want to make sure that you create these layers. That way everything can be seen because if you've got it all like, you know, stacked like this, I mean, that could be kind of cute, but you want to make sure everything has room to kind of show itself and you don't want it to be too bulky because then you're running into it. It's not as um, efficient. You could do something like this and then, yeah, just finish it off with a ribbon. I like to keep them long and drapey. I feel like the holidays are all about like drapey ribbon, drapey ribbon everywhere. That's my motto. Um, I think, I think we're... We're out of time. It does, oh my gosh, it does make the house smell amazing. It smells so good. So I say like, if you have the materials, just go crazy. If you wanna make a garland, those are super easy. Follow the same kind of technique of just binding little bundles together, layering them, and then you'll create one long length. And then you can, you know, put them on banisters, hang them over your fireplace, your mantle, and you can weave in little pine cones and oranges and things like that too. So um, definitely use, that's what reeds, that's how they started. They were just the, the leftovers from tree trimming and, you know, people were really conscious about using their scraps and things like that way back in the day. We're kind of making that shift back to doing that too, but it's, it's always good to use all the things that you have. So Keep going, just like go crazy with whatever you've got. Um, yeah, but thank you so much for joining in and I hope uh, I hope this was informative and I hope that you guys create some beautiful things together and enjoy the holidays. Um, and I wish you the happiest holiday and uh, a great 2020, 2021. Um, yeah, thank you so much for joining. Um, take care.